Hello second graders, today we are doing the deep dive number 12 for module 1. You will need either post-it notes, a note card, or just a piece of paper to write on. Um, you will also need your reading notebook, we're going to use the vocabulary section again. And you need your book, The Little Yellow Leaf. Today's craft question is how do authors use adjectives to help readers visualize the text? Hmm, are there any words in there that we're not sure of? Let's read it together. Our craft question is, how do authors use adjectives to help readers visualize the text? Well, today we are going to learn what adjectives are, if we're not sure already. And we're going to talk about what it means to visualize something. I'm going to read this sentence to you. I want you to think about the words that are highlighted yellow. It was autumn. In the hush of the forest, a lone yellow leaf clung to the branch of a great oak tree. How do the words lone yellow and great help readers visualize or picture what is happening. So if you were to close your eyes and I read this sentence to you, I want you to try to picture what is happening. So go ahead, close your eyes. It was autumn. In the hush of the forest, a lone yellow leaf clung to the branch of a great oak tree. Try to picture what is happening. Think about how the words that are highlighted yellow, lone, yellow, and great, help you picture what is happening. Well, lone sounds like lonely or alone, so the leaf might be missing the other leaves that used to hang on the oak tree. Yellow tells us that the season is fall because the leaf isn't green. Great tells us that the oak tree is big and high. It probably had lots of leaves on it, so the little yellow leaf would have had lots of company. Since the tree is great, maybe it's high or tall, then the leaf may be extra afraid of falling all that way to the ground. An adjective is a word that describes something. So lone, yellow, and great are all adjectives. Adjectives describe nouns. So those are people, places, or things. We are going to go on a grammar safari. So we're going to be looking for some things in your book, The Little Yellow Leaf. Um, you will need your post-it notes or note card or just a piece of paper to jot down some adjectives. In lesson 11, we look through your book to find verbs or action words. Today, we are going to look for adjectives or describing words, words that describe people, places, or things. As you find them, jot them down on your post-it or note card. So if I were reading The Little Yellow Leaf and I came across the word yellow, yellow describes the leaf. So I'm going to write down yellow. So pause the video, look through your book, The Little Yellow Leaf, and jot down as many adjectives or describing words that you can find. When you're done, unpause the video. On my grammar safari, I found these adjectives. How might these adjectives help readers picture or visualize what is happening in the text? First of all, I need to know what visualizing means. That is a big word, visualizing. This means I make mental pictures or picture what's going on in my head. So I make mental pictures that change as I read. It's like a movie playing in my brain as I read the story. So some words that I found that were describing words were lone, yellow, great, fiery, crackly, 
and scarlet. Did you find those words too? Did you find more than six words? If so, nice job. I'm going to read this sentence from your book, The Little Yellow Leaf. I'm not ready yet, thought the little yellow leaf as a riot of fiery leaves chased and swirled round the tree. How does the adjective fiery help readers visualize the leaves? Or how does it help us picture that in our brains, in our minds? How can we make a little movie in our brain as we're reading that? The word fiery. Hmm. Well, fires are yellow, orange, and red. The autumn leaves are too. Flames move and change quickly. I visualize the piles of leaves moving and changing shape quickly like a fire. I imagine the little leaf watching all the other leaves and not being ready to join them, like the last little kid at the park who's afraid to join a game. Let's look at our next adjective. I'm going to read another sentence from our story. Still not, he thought, as the other leaves gathered into great heaps, crackly dry, where children played. How do the adjectives great, crackly, and dry help readers continue to visualize a story? So I just picture these fire-colored leaves swirling about, and now I'm reading about how the leaves are gathered into great heaps or big piles, crackly dry, where children played. What am I picturing in my head now? Well, crackly dry make it sound like the sound leaves make when they're old and dried up. Like in the fall when you go and step on leaves that have fallen off the of trees and makes that crackly sound because they're all dried up. Using words that show us how the leaves sound shows us how the leaves change during autumn and what will happen to the little yellow leaf after it drops from the tree. Next, you're going to open your reading notebook to the vocabulary section. You're going to choose two of our adjectives to add to your notebook. Write the word and a sentence using each word. So you've, you have written the word on the left side and then the meaning or the definition on the right. Today, you're going to write the word on the left side and then a sentence using that word. I'll give you a couple examples. You can use the same examples or you can make your own. So I chose the two words fiery and scarlet. So I'm going to add a sentence for each of these. So I'll take out my pencil here. I'll write it in orange today. So for fiery, I might write a riot of fiery leaves swirled around the tree. Now if this is a sentence, I need a period at the end or some sort of punctuation. Again, fiery meaning I see colors of red, orange, and yellow swirling around the tree. And the second adjective I chose is scarlet. Do you know what scarlet means? If you don't, you can look in your book, The Little Yellow Leaf, and towards the end, we see the word scarlet. There's another leaf that the little yellow leaf sees on the tree, and they describe it as a scarlet leaf. So that's a red color. So I'm going to write um, the scarlet leaf fell from 
the tree. Again, this is a sentence. It's got a capital letter at the beginning, punctuation at the end. So Scarlet, I'm able to picture, oh, there's a red leaf now falling from the tree. You can either use the same words or you can choose two different words to use. Just remember it today, instead of writing the meaning or the definition, we are writing a sentence with those words that we chose. And we're coming in for a landing. Why might it be important for authors to use interesting and descriptive adjectives? Hmm. Well, adjectives help you picture what is happening better. They can make the story more interesting. Adjectives can tell the reader more about the people, places, and things in a story or poem. We will continue to learn more about adjectives. Remember, adjectives are describing words. Um, so I can, I'll give you an example that's not with the little yellow leaf. The bumpy green frog hopped along the road. Are you able to picture what that frog looks like? Or the slimy brown worm crawled through the dirt. Are you able to picture what is happening with those descriptive words? Now can you picture this? The leaf fell. The leaf fell. Is that easy to picture? Well, what? I have more questions now. What color leaf? How did it fall? Why did it fall? How can we describe the leaf better? How can we describe how it's falling? Adjectives really help us picture what's happening. When you are the writer, you want to make the reader be able to picture in their brains what is happening that you are writing about. So we will practice writing adjectives with words in the future as well. I hope you had fun and remember your task was to choose two adjectives to add to your vocabulary journal with sentences using those words. Okay, have a great day.